as a kid, I started riding motorbikes. So much power and, and so much speed kind of makes you feel a little bit bulletproof in a way. Frickin' motorbikes, can I swear? Life is different with a broken back. Working out with a spinal injury is pretty taxing. Your nervous system is already really affected, so it's important to not overdo it. I've never dwelled on what's happened. There's so much in life to enjoy it, but learning how to live life again in a different way is very hard. I think it's very important to have other people to help you through. I started riding motorbikes at the age of 11. Lots of trail rides, a bit of motocross. My first bike was a Suzuki DRZ125. A few years later, would have bought my road bike. I wasn't happy because he was going from dirt bikes to a big road bike, and he wasn't experienced on, on the road. My road bike was a XJR 1300, big engine. They weigh over 200 kilos pretty quick. This road was the road that I had ridden and driven quite a fair bit. I was in a wee bit of a hurry just to complete my, my last couple of hours of work at the second job. I remember uh, a car was in front of me across this bridge here and then there was a big long straight I passed a car, started giving it the berries, and um, the next corner was the corner that I come off on. So I came up to this corner, realised that it was a different corner that I, that I had in mind. I realised I was going far too quick. Quickly put the brakes on, I looked ahead to see where I was going to end up. There was a ditch, there was a fence, there was a paddock. And that was the crash. And then the next thing I remember is lying on my back. I think it was the weekend, nice and sunny. You heard this bike coming up the road. Yeah, just did a big lock up, heaps of noise, and then just went totally silent. I said to me kids, You guys stay there. Shot outside. I was worried what I was going to find out there. I wake up stuck in the fence to the sound of a voice. I can see you. The voice was Mark's. I'm coming. He stabilises me, makes sure that my head is not moving, my neck is not moving. Ryan goes, can't feel me feet. It sort of upset me, knowing what he would be going through. Cos I'd lost my leg in a forestry accident. Rung 111, he says, better send a helicopter. I think he's broken his back. I thought, oh, shit, there's some washing on the line. I'd better go and get that in so it doesn't get sucked up by the road to wash. <laughs> So I was frantically getting that off the clothesline. A chopper came in. They landed in the paddock, so really close. There was a message from the local constable. He came down to the house and, and told me that Ryan had been in a motorbike accident. After it happened, I went out a big ball about it. Just emotion, knowing what Ryan would be going through. Not just physically, but emotionally more so. Got to Christchurch Hospital, walked in, and the older nurse that was there pulled me outside and told me what was going on, and that the next day he was going to be transferred to Burwood Hospital, and they were going to put a rod in his back. And then I asked her, When will he walk again? She said, no, dear, he won't walk again. The 
they gave me a 5% chance, but I knew exactly what that meant. I've been asked, like, is that a bad thing? Is it like a little little bit of hope there? But I, I didn't see it that way. I saw, OK, this is, this is done and dusted now. Let's move on. I'm a T7 paraplegic, complete. So that means no, no feeling uh, from around the belly button area down. My injury occurred in April 2016. I was 18 years of age. I went through Burwood Spinal Unit and I can now do life unassisted. As a kid, I was very active due to my old man being active himself. Lots of tramping, hunting, mountain biking, motorbikes. He had no fear. He just gave everything a go. He loved going out on the farm. He had a little four-wheeler motorbike. Just looking at some of these photos of Ryan, such a chubby little bubba, handsome. Oh, here we go, motorbike again. Mum has had a bad run with motorbikes. Mum's ex-husband crashed and passed away quite a few years before. I had my crash. My dad and mum's current husband, Colin, all absolutely love motorbikes, so she can't get away from them. <laughs> so I think she's just accepted it, that that's a fact of life. Not everyone likes it or enjoys working out. I personally do because it's a good escape. I feel good about myself for doing it. Before Ryan had his accident, he was into bodybuilding. He was very focused, very strong. And when he was doing his rehab down at Burwood, the ladies down at the rehab had to pull him back because he still had stitches in his back because of this operation to put the rod in. I got this video of Ryan, and he's in his wheelchair on the bars. The wheelchair's strapped him, and he's doing pull-ups. So, yeah, amazing. Definitely takes time and practice to get on and off these machines and equipment. These spasms are a sensory response to a, a muscle being stretched. I have no control over it, but it is an absolute menace when it comes to getting off and on equipment. Well, after I had my accident, I began to think about plans for the future, what I'm going to do for uh, a career. And I thought, I want to help people. And I thought personal training would be a good option. All right. Here. I work out of a gym locally here in Motueka. It's a community-based facility. Nice, two more. Being in a wheelchair and having to do PTing, you've definitely got to think outside the box. I can't demonstrate a squat. I can't demonstrate leg movements. But I can explain them and I can utilise videos and pictures. And other people in the gym even to demo a move for me for my client. With that posterior pelvic tilt, to try and get that rec femur and that hip flexor as well. There's ways around it, for sure. That's the hurdle, I think. Yeah, that sort of forces you to. Angers studying personal training at the moment. We've sort of bounced off each other in the last couple of months. A couple of, couple of combinations. Her shadowing clients, us doing some training. Roger, let's go. Eventually, I'd like to be a good PT, just like Ryan. He's helped me along the way with not only my own training, but helping others. <laughs> what would be your best advice to bring on new clients? Keeping things fresh uh, is, is the key thing. Yeah. A lot of the times, that they're not going to enjoy certain exercises, yeah. but they need to, as you know. It's important to reinforce and tell them, hey, look, let's get through this and then let's do something that is a bit easier or a bit more enjoyable. Uh, but let's knock this out now because it's so good for us. Yeah. yeah. Did you get um, loads of some food? No, I didn't. Yeah.
my partner Aroha. She's just been so supportive and just an absolute blessing to have along my side. Sometimes mum, your mama. She has been through everything from day one. Aroha and I are a good team. I run a personal training business and a boot camp, so it's great. It's great to have a stream of income between us. I knew Aroha before my accident. Right, just come in a little bit, guys. What we're going to do here is just 40 seconds on each station. So we'll do a little demo now. So Aroha, Lutes. We had the same friend group, and I actually tried to ask her out before my accident and kind of got shut down a wee bit. So that was that. And uh, side to side, try and touch the ground if you can. Utilise your range of motion. Uh, I was quite busy. Chuck your toes in and out. Or... The jump squats. And I just kept an eye on him. <laughs> and then Two. I ended up moving to Christchurch. Go, go, one, go. That's just yeah. when we drifted off and stopped talking. Yeah, touch those toes, mate. When I was living in Christchurch, I had a friend text me saying that Ryan has had a motorbike accident and he's now in Burwood Hospital. Mm -hmm. I felt like I wanted to go see him as a friend and support him. He was in a lot of pain. He wasn't moving, pretty much lying on his back. Um, it was quite hard to see. <laughs> yeah. Because the see. last time I saw Ryan, he was walking around and, yeah. They were doing weird for you? Yeah, it was weird. I don't remember a hell of a lot of being on, on the ward. But I do remember little flashbacks of Aroha. Taking you to physio. Taking, yeah, going to swimming physio. Swimming lessons. Coffee dates. Coffee dates, free coffee. Free coffee <laughs> at Bellwood. I walked in one weekend, and here they were on the bed, lying side by side, and I thought, oh, who's this girl? I hadn't seen her before. Yeah, and he said, oh, Mum, this is Aroha. She was a lot in the picture after that. Dog, not dog, dog, not dog, dog, not dog. I was thinking like, well, I care about that right now and I've got, to, I've got work to do. But she just kept coming and coming and then eventually I was like, oh yeah, she's pretty cool. Once rehabilitation was well on its way, I, I could relax a bit, let people in, I suppose. Give it to me. <laughs> Right, oh, already. Yep. And three, two, one, go. We had a spark. Felt like myself around him. That was a really good guy, thank you. She's a very patient, very patient lady, and she, she's been a massive help. I don't know where I would be without her coming on the scene. Because adapting to realising you can't do certain things anymore is very hard. It's still hard, you know. Like, you're used to your old life and then you realise, I have to do that a completely different way now. But you start to heal. You start to heal emotionally too, right? And then you can start bringing on new things. Hey, Buster. Go. Aroha and I practically have been married for the last uh, six years. See the, the water? <laughs> We've been living together the whole time. So I thought it would be a good idea to get her family together and make it a surprise. Her auntie and uncle have a nice place up on a hill. So I hired a photographer and made him hide in a bush. And I proposed. As we came back up, everyone was out on the deck by that stage and they were all clapping and um, it was a very special uh, day. They are so happy together and, you know, she stood by him all this time, and that just proves how much she loves him, and he loves her. He actually adores Aroha. How do you think we're going on the wedding front? Yeah, I think we've got everything sorted. They're getting married in January in Christchurch, and, and they'll probably start a family, which is very exciting. Here, Lewis. Here, Lewis. Um, how are we going to do these vows? We haven't done this yet. No. If you write something, then I will. Yeah. It's definitely not going to be like a, a Shakespeare or whatever they, whatever they say. Yeah. You 
here in Motueka, we're really close to the coast. We're also really close to the hills. I think I was really lucky as a kid to be able to get into the outdoors nice and young. We'd always be going out in the, in the weekends, hunting, tramping. I suppose I had a lot of time to um, develop those skills. And, um, now I can sort of do a variation of those in a wheelchair now. Good and overcast, bit of drizzle here, but we might get a chance to have a, have a glass onto something up here. I'm lacking in core control and I don't have any leg drive. But there's definitely ways you can still hunt. Being able to be stable in the chair helps a lot. If you're on gravel roads or over bumpy terrain, then you'll need a free wheel, or you'll just need a, a different form of transport, so like a quad bike. I can hold myself up as long as I've got something to hold. As for gear changes and things, I might have a switch up on uh, the handlebars. Good to go. I've brought me 270. Oh, yeah. Today, we've, we've, got, uh, we've got Paul, Azza, Aaron. These guys are right into their hunting. Paul happens to be Anahua's dad, too, so I've got a good bit of rapport and a good bit of a relationship going with him. And, Aaron's a, a long-time friend. Ryan's pretty stubborn. He uh, tries to do most of the stuff for himself, but needs a bit of a hand to get him out of the ute and on the bike and whatever. But this, yeah, he can do most of it himself, really. What do you think, Aaron? We're getting set up down below there. Just down by the bushes over here and... Yep. Quick, though. Yeah, no, he's still there. Let's, let's make a hey, move. He's on, he's on the move, guys. We're going to have to be real quick. This Got could it. be... Yeah, this we could lose a shot. Let's go. Let's make it happen. I'm pretty determined not to let my injury, you know, hold me back from doing these things like fishing and hunting and getting out in the rain. <laughs> Ryan, um, you know, he got off from that bike by himself and um, he, he crawled along that ground. Uh, there was gorse lying around, but, you know, that, that didn't stop him. That determination is his strength. He's on the move, Ryan. What do you, what do you see there? We're just right behind him, 100%. You think he's getting a shot on him there? Is he, is he moving too far? No, he's on his move. Oh. Range? No. 300, 220 there. Can you see him, Aaron? Yep, he's behind the tree. Oh, no. Nah, he's, oh, he's, he's off. You can just see the arse end of him. I think we've missed a window there, guys. Never mind. Okay. I am a hunter. I do enjoy it. But doesn't mean that every time I go out, I need to taste something's life. He's not coming back. Did you enjoy your hunt? You know, did you enjoy the process? If you're not enjoying the process of the hunt, then why are you doing it? Got him? Yep. yep. can't tell by now, I've got skinny legs. <laughs> oh, how do we put these on, Ryan? The wedding's January 22nd. I think your foot's not in properly. It is. So not, not too far now, so we've got to get the practice in on the uh, leg braces. Yes. Yeah, right. That would do. So we're nice and confident on the day. <sighs> I do have to admit I, I'm a bit slack when it comes to getting in the standing position. It's, it's something that that all nurses and physios stress that we've, we've got to do to keep up the bone density and the um, and the joint health. Okay. I've not used these in over a year, so I'm a little bit nervous that I'm going to fall over or something, something like that. It's going to have to be more or less a daily thing from now until uh, till the wedding. Well, I originally got these for going to parties and things, and so I could stand up with everyone else and have a beer. That Zimmer frame, I, I won't be able to walk without it. It's for that balance. I like it because uh, during the ceremony, and if you're trying to stand close to someone, it's you know it can it can be right up against you, right out of the way. So if you're trying to take photos and, and things like that, uh, it's, it's not too invasive. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, Aroha. You're fine. Jeez. It's fine. I've got you. <laughs> you give me a kiss. Okay. Uh, I've got I, you. No, I'm not <laughs> giving you a kiss. Sorry about that. <laughs> really cool to be standing next to Aroha. It was a great feeling. 
she says that I'm the tallest and the shortest boyfriend at the same time she's ever had. So. Hey, boy. No, he's not seen me walk before. Right. That's a bit cute. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, what is my dad doing? There has been a lot of suffering, but then when I see this kid and the way he is, it counteracts. If he had been not so motivated, you know, I would have felt it a lot more. <laughs> Mum, you know, I know that she's been through a lot, but. She's always here by my side. How's the wedding plans going? Good. Getting yep. closer to the time. He still gives me hugs and kisses and tells me how much he loves me, and I do to him too. Because you never know, it might be the look, his accident. It could have been worse. Could have gone, could have, could have died in that accident. It's going to be really hot yeah, that exactly. time of the year. I still have a lot of guilt for putting, putting all my family through that, and, and, and just especially mum. They sit there and they say, it's OK, you know, but it doesn't take away the f my feeling of, of guilt and, and how much of, you yeah, see, now I'm getting, getting a, a bit um, upset, but I like to think that I've come a long way since then and done better than I thought. I, I was thinking, Aroha and I were thinking that we will go, um, we'll go keto, ketogenic diet, so that's just strict, that's no carbohydrate. We'll do it a week before the wedding. When you do that, you actually drop a bunch of water. So you drop a bunch of water weight in your face and it makes you a little bit more photogenic. Oh, maybe I need to do that. No. It's too late. <laughs> Being around the right people that can keep me going and through the help of, of my friends and family in Aroha, and they have keep me moving forward in a positive direction. Such a boy. And I'm happy where I'm at. I'm happy where I'm going. I've got plans for the future. Uh, I've got aspirations. Hey, uh, we just want to bring our glasses together and have a toast to Ryan and Aroha for the uh, the best for their lives and their future. So let's lift our glasses to them and let's toast to Aroha and Ryan. Aroha and Ryan. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Okay. And uh, I might at this point say a word of uh, thanksgiving or karakia for us. Te araki, haere mai te wairua tapu, te whānau o te kai kōri a ki te atua, whakapainu ki ora tātou katoa. We give thanks. Amen. Amen. Amen.